In previous videos, we took a look at sweeps, variable section sweeps, and blends. And in this video, we're going to take a look at swept blends. The difference between these features are the combinations of their trajectories and their sections. With a simple sweep, you have a single trajectory and a single section. With a variable section sweep, you can have multiple trajectories and you still have a single section, but that section can vary using elements like trage part and eval graph. With a blend, you don't have a trajectory, but you can have multiple sections. And a swept blend, as the name implies, is sort of a combination of a sweep and a blend. You have a single trajectory, and along that single trajectory, you can have multiple sections. Here I have a part model started, and it's for a drone project that I'm working on, and I'm going to have a big air scoop at the front of it, and I'm going to channel the air through along this trajectory into a box that's going to work on it. And so this is a perfect opportunity for a swept blend. To create the swept blend, I'm going to click on the command over here, and let's collapse the model tree and open up the References tab. And the first thing I need to select is my trajectory, and I have a curve already for that. And you can see that you have an arrow on the end, and you can flip it if you want to start from the other side. Also, you have these two dimensions on here that allow you to use a portion of the trajectory instead of the whole thing. And we have our section plane control, just like with a variable section sweep. and we have our horizontal vertical control, and you can also control the X direction if you need to. On the dashboard, you can change this from creating a solid feature to a surface, which I'm going to do. If you already have solid geometry in your model, you could use this to remove material, and you can also thicken the feature. Let's go to the Sections tab, and since I already created some sketches for my different sections, I don't need to sketch inside of the feature. I can select my existing ones, and I'll select my first section, and there you can see Section 1, and one vertex is going to have an arrow on it, and that's the start point. Just like with a blend, you want to make sure that your start points line up so you don't get unwanted twist in the model. And it doesn't matter which direction that the arrow points, just matters which vertex it's on. It uses that pink arrow to call your attention to it. So that's good for section one. Let's click the insert button and select our second section. Now we can start seeing a preview of the feature and there's our start point. It lines up. Let's insert another section, and I'll pick my third section. And here's a situation where now we're getting twist in the model that we don't want. So to change the start point, I'm just going to drag it to another vertex. And it's looking a little better, but not perfect yet. Drag it one more time. There we go. That's the way I want it to be. And I'm going to toggle it to a solid feature for a moment, just to show you uh, another option. Inside of here, we have on the reference, References tab, right now it's being normal to the traje trajectory at every point along there. Maybe instead I want a constant normal direction, so I can change this to constant normal direction. And you pick what you want the sections to be parallel to, not what you want them to be normal to. It's kind of a weird uh, naming of it. All right, that's good. Let's go to the Sections tab and insert another one. There we go, that looks good. And let's insert another one. And finally, let's insert our last section. And there we go, there we have the feature. And the problem is it's interpolating between the different sections. And in this particular case, I really want it to be straight between these two sections. So I'm going to cancel out of here. And first, rather than create my swept blend first, I'm gonna create a blend just between these two sections. So let's go to our shapes overflow, choose blend, and select our first section. Oops, I forgot to change to selected sections. And let's go to the sections tab. And for our selected section, let's start here, and then insert another one, and grab our second section. And that is good. 
And for what I'm going to do later, I'm going to generate this as a non-solid surface feature. Let's hit our check mark, and now we can create our swept blend. And since I already did it once, I'm going to go a little faster this time. Select my trajectory, and I'm going to go to the Sections tab and select my sections. And let's pick Section 1 and Control, or excuse me, Insert Section 2 and Insert Section 3 and change the start point and insert our final section and I'm going to grab this over here and on this boundary over here I can right click on this circle and change my boundary conditions because I want it tangent to the box and it's going to highlight an edge and you pick the corresponding surface that you want that edge to be tangent to and if you go to the Tangency tab, here you can see we have the end section tangent and the entities that are selected for that tangency condition. So that is good for this one. And now let's create one more swept blend for the end. And I will select my trajectory. And here I'm going to flip the direction. And like I mentioned, you can drag this white circle off if you don't want to use the entire length and if I want it to step to this datum point as I'm dragging it I'm gonna hold down the shift key and select the point and that way it locks right in there so that's good from the sections tab I can choose that I want selected sections be aware you can also hold down the right mouse button to get additional functionality for the feature that you're trying to create but let's choose selected sections and section one and I know where my start point is let's insert our second section and select this over here and it guesses it correctly and just like before let's right click on the boundary condition and choose tangent and select this edge or excuse me that surface this surface for the red edge this surface over here and this surface over there so that is good. Just to mention a few other things that you have in a swept blend. Here's the button for add blend vertex if you had an unequal number of vertices per section. We already took a look at the tangency tab. And on the options tab, here you can have this box that adjusts to keep tangency. And we also have our blend control. The default is no blend control. We have this other button here to set perimeter control to make the perimeter of the blend linearly between sections and this set cross-section area control allows you to change the cross-section if you had different points along the vertices excuse me along the trajectory you could select those points and specify explicitly what you want the cross-section to be instead of letting Creo parametric use the default interpolation so that's good let's hit the check mark and now I have oops this last one I meant to create as a surface let's edit definition and generate this as a surface hit the check mark same with the first one generate that as a solid by accident let's create this as a surface all right great and now that I have my different surfaces I can stitch these together and this is the sweat blend but for my project I'm going to show you a few other additional things I'm using the filter in the bottom right hand corner to change my selection filter to quilts and that way I can hold down the control key to select these three quilts and then use the merge command in order to stitch these together into a single quilt and now I've got my quilt up oh, let me go back and turn on my datum plane visibility I'm gonna mirror it but I can't remember which plane I want to mirror about let's try let's see is it front yep let's make front visible and so now I can take my quilt and I am going to mirror it about the datum plane called front preview looks good let's hit the check mark and if I take a look at the air intake because I mirrored it it's kind of blocking off both channels along here so I need to do some trimming let's select this quilt and I am going to use the trim command which I can get to from the mini toolbar or from the editing group in the ribbon let's select the datum plane front to use for our trim 
and it's keeping the wrong portion. It might be hard for you to see, but there are little faint orange dots making a grid on here showing what's going to be retained. But that's the wrong part, so let's use the flip button. And I like where I'm seeing the preview. And hit the check mark. And now let's repeat that one more time for this other quilt. And again, from the mini toolbar, Here's the trim command. By the way, you can use a variety of different objects as a trimming object. I'm using a datum plane, but you could use curves, you could use other surfaces, uh, even points. And so there's the preview of what I'm going to retain. That's good. Let's hit the check mark. And I'm really liking how this is turning out. Let's turn off our datums. I don't need to see them anymore. And let's select the two quilts again and we can choose to merge them and I'm going to end up joining them together and now in order to give this some thickness I select the quilt and here is the thicken command in the mini toolbar right now it's thickening to the outside let's flip it and this is way too thick let's make this 0.25 that's good. I hit the check mark. And there I have my air intake. And so the air will come in, go through here, get processed, and then exit out the end. And just show you a couple other different things. Let's take a look at our cross sections. So here's the X cross section as we're going through here. And while you're in the cross-section command, you can use the drop-down list if you want to take a look at the cross-section in the Y direction. And finally, let's go to the Z direction. Pretty nice. And let's leave that. Let's leave it at Y. And as always, you should change the names of your cross-sections. Change this to A and hit the check mark and there we have the air scoop i hope you enjoyed this video for more information please visit www.creowindchill.com if you learned something from this video please give it a thumbs up and if you like this video please click the subscribe button to be informed when new videos are added thank you very much